Mr. Secretary General, um, welcome to our uh, program. Thank you for uh, joining us um, here at Deveselu base. Let me ask you first, what is the NATO message for Romanians today? The message for uh, Romanians is that NATO is here to protect and defend uh, all allies, uh, including, of course, Romania, against any threat. And uh, that's the reason why we are uh, both increasing our military presence in Romania. We have increased our presence uh, over the last years. And also why NATO is developing uh, missile defense. Uh, this is a, a U.S. contribution uh, to uh, uh, NATO's uh, missile defense uh, system. And we are now uh, making progress on that because uh, we have to be able also to defend uh, NATO allies against uh, missile attacks coming from outside the Euro-Atlantic area. What is the next step for uh, NATO in securing Europe? We are doing two things. We are increasing the readiness and the preparedness of our forces so we can uh, deploy forces on very short notice if needed. And we are also increased and uh, we are also in the process of increasing our presence in the eastern part of the uh, uh, alliance. And uh, we do so because uh, NATO is there to protect all allies against any threat. It's about collective defense, uh, one for all and all for one. So an attack on one NATO ally will be an attack on the whole alliance. And this deterrence uh, is strong, it's clear, and it has protected all NATO allies uh, uh, for more than six decades. We know uh, that the missile shield uh, will protect us um, by targeting and destroying enemy ballistic missiles. Who is the enemy? This is a system which is developed for uh, defending uh, Europe against ballistic missiles coming from outside the Euro-Atlantic area, uh, the Middle East uh, region. Uh, we have seen, for instance, that Iran uh, is continuing to develop uh, its uh, ballistic uh, missile uh, systems. Uh, this is a long-term uh, uh, investment in a long-term uh, threat. Uh, so we have to be prepared, we have to be ready because we see that more and more countries are developing uh, uh, ballistic uh, uh, missiles. Have you noticed any changes regarding uh, North Korean program, ballistic program? So what we have seen is that North Korea is continuing to develop both uh, ballistic missiles but also uh, nuclear weapons. And this is of course of great concern. Uh, they are violating uh, a number of UN uh, uh, resolutions, they are violating uh, uh, the, the, the efforts to, 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 to avoid proliferation of, of nuclear weapons. So, uh, of course, this is something I condemn, uh, the development of uh, both ballistic missile systems and nuclear weapons of uh, North Korea. Russia threatened NATO countries for hosting BMD system, um, including uh, Romania. According to Vladimir Putin, Russia is going to develop new strike weapons that can penetrate any missile defense shield, uh, Russian president said. How does NATO respond to all of this? Russia knows that this is not directed against Russia. Uh, this missile defense system is directed against systems uh, or missiles coming from outside the Euro-Atlantic uh, area, not from uh, Russia. Uh, and uh, uh, both uh, geography and uh, and physics uh, makes it impossible for these systems to shoot down Russian intercontinental ballistic missiles or undermine what is called a Russian uh, strategic uh, deterrent. Uh, that's about geography, it's about physics. Uh, the sites are either, either too far south or too close to Russia to be able to shoot down uh, Russian uh, intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic uh, uh, missiles. We have offered transparency, we have offered cooperation with Russia uh, from the beginning uh, related to ballistic missile defense, but uh, Russia decided to, 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 to spend or to, not, to, to unilaterally stop that cooperation. So now we don't uh, have that cooperation with Russia on the ballistic missile defense. Mr. Secretary General, with the annexation of Crimea, Russia is making a strong presence in the Black Sea. Romania is asking for a NATO fleet in the Black Sea in order to feel more secure. Can we expect uh, to have an, an answer or a decision at the um, NATO summit in Warsaw? 
NATO has already increased our military presence uh, in uh, the eastern flank or eastern part of uh, the NATO alliance, also in Romania, uh, with more exercises, with uh, air policing uh, and also with more naval presence in the uh, Black Sea. And we are now looking into what more we can do. And this is one of the important issues uh, we will address at our uh, summit in uh, Warsaw in July. And I discussed it both with the Prime Minister and with the President uh, during my visit here in Romania. So this is high on our agenda. Uh, we have already taken important steps and we are looking into what more uh, uh, that we can uh, do. Because NATO as an alliance is also of course concerned about the substantial Russian military buildup in the Black Sea, the illegal uh, annexation of uh, Crimea. And, uh, and therefore we are responding uh, by adapting our uh, military forces to this new uh, security environment. Also in the last year's Russian air activity close to NATO's European uh, borders has increased by around 70%. Uh, there were hundreds of interception um, and quite a few violations of NATO airspace. This year alone, Romanian fighter jets uh, scramble uh, to intercept Russian aircraft uh, four times. What would be the solution to reduce risk and increase military transparency? We have seen a significant uh, increased uh, presence of uh, Russian planes, ships, uh, military, uh, different military forces uh, close to NATO borders over several years. And uh, we are concerned also about the risks for incidents, accidents. And we saw the downing of the Russian uh, plane over Turkey some months ago. And we have seen the uh, unsafe behavior of Russian planes coming very close to uh, US ships and also US planes in the Baltic uh, Sea just uh, a couple of weeks ago. All of this just underlines the need for uh, mechanisms to reduce risks transparency, predictability, and NATO is working for that because we need uh, mechanisms in place to avoid that kind of incidents and if they happen, to make sure that they don't spiral out of control and create really dangerous situations. So the increased military presence along our borders has just increased uh, the, the, the reason for strengthening uh, military to military channels for communication, risk reduction mechanisms and transparency to avoid the dangerous situations. Regarding military intelligence on Russia, General Bridla, former secure, said recently that being focused on Afghanistan and Iraq, Western intelligence community, and I quote, lost contact with Russia at the uh, operational and tactical level. The intelligence community said General Bridlov kept the focus on Russia only at strategic level. How the events of the past two years changed the alliance approach towards Russia? What we have seen is uh, that uh, Russia has uh, invested uh, uh, very much in modern military equipment, in more exercises, in uh, building up the military forces. Uh, and they are exercising more and uh, they have also shown the will to use military force to change borders in Europe, uh, in Ukraine. This is the first time since the Second World War that that has happened in, in, in Europe. And that's exactly why NATO is responding. That's the reason why we have uh, increased the readiness of our forces. That's the reason why we have increased our presence in the eastern part of the alliance. And that has also contributed to uh, NATO uh, stepping up uh, our cooperation when it comes to intelligence and, uh, and, uh, and sharing intelligence. Uh, because all of this is uh, a part of NATO adaptation to a more challenging uh, security environment. Sir, how the uh, future looks, especially in this region? This region is uh, a region which are close to both the turmoil, the violence we see to the south, uh, Iraq, Syria, uh, the Middle East, but also, of course, uh, close to uh, a more assertive Russia, in the east and the north, uh, in Crimea, in, in, in the, around the Black Sea region. So I think that uh, Romania uh, is, uh, uh, is a key country uh, in the whole region. 
And uh, I think it underlines the importance of NATO being part of, uh, no, Romania being, being part of NATO. And NATO is here to protect uh, Romania. Uh, there's a lot of NATO in Romania already. We have uh, uh, different kinds of headquarters in Romania. We have exercises, we have uh, US forces. Uh, so NATO is here uh, and I uh, can guarantee that NATO is here to protect Romania against any threats. And NATO uh, is also very grateful for the contributions Romania provides to our collective uh, defense. So this is uh, a joint effort where we protect each other. I would like to ask you also um, about uh, the NATO's mission in, in Afghanistan recently. Two Romanian soldiers from special forces were killed and another one um, wounded uh, in a um, green on blue attack in uh, Kandahar. Has the situation become more dangerous as the insurgency gained more ground in Afghanistan? Romania has contributed to NATO's presence uh, in Afghanistan over many years with many troops and I'm very grateful and uh, I commend uh, Romania for its strong contribution. I will also express my uh, condolences uh, because of the loss of two lives, two soldiers killed in Kandahar, uh, two Romanian soldiers and also hope uh, for a speedy recovery of the soldier that was wounded. Uh, the important thing we do in Afghanistan is that we have ended the NATO combat mission. Uh, what we do now in Afghanistan is that we train, assist and advise the Afghan forces, enabling them to take full responsibility for uh, security in their own country themselves. And I very much believe that that's the right strategy of NATO to uh, train local forces, to enable local, local forces to stabilize uh, their own country and that's exactly what Romania and NATO is doing in Afghanistan. And um, if uh, we are talking about insurgency and uh, terrorism, um, could you tell us what role is NATO playing in the fight against ISIS and uh, if it will be expanded, especially after the recent attack in Brussels at NATO's doorstep? All NATO allies uh, contribute to the fight against uh, ISIL uh, in different uh, ways. Uh, I think it's important also to remember that our biggest military operation ever, uh, the military operation in Afghanistan, is an operation which is there because we fight terror. Uh, it was a direct response to a terror attack against the United States, 9-11-2001. Uh, we uh, support the efforts of the US-led coalition to fight ISIL in, uh, in Iraq and Syria. NATO has started training of Iraqi officers in Jordan and we are working with also other countries in the region, uh, Tunisia, Jordan, to enable and to help them uh, stabilize their own countries and to uh, 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 be able to contribute to the fight against the ISIL. So NATO is doing a lot, uh, we share intelligence, we work with the countries in the region and we support the uh, efforts of the coalition fighting ISIL. All of this is uh, uh, NATO uh, contributions to the, the fight uh, against terrorism. Mr. Secretary General, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you.